the organic reaction section of organic chemistry in the chemistry paper is question four, which reads, the flow diagram below shows how various organic compounds can be prepared using compound P as the starting reagent. Now, it's normally a good idea just to familiarize yourself with this diagram before going on to the question. So what we can see is that compound P starts out as certain as a certain substance and goes through a reaction that looks like it is going to form two different organic compounds. As we can see here, one of the products of this reaction is an alkane, C5H12. We know that that is an alkane because it has the formula CnH2n plus two, which would suggest that this reaction one might be a cracking reaction that produces an alkane along with an alkene. This is further supported by the idea that this substance can then go through a bromination reaction as well as a hydrohalogenation, which means that this substance, compound Q, must be unsaturated, which would support our idea that this substance, compound Q, might be an alkene. We then go on to the questions where we see question 4.1 says, Write down the meaning of the term hydrohalogenation and the correct meaning for hydrohalogenation is the addition of a hydrogen halide or HX to an alkene. So hydrohalogenation occurs when we add a hydrogen that is combined to some halogen that is a group 17 element to an alkene. Question 4.2 asks us to write down the structural formula for compound Q. And so an easy way to start with this is to work backwards from our hydrohalogenation reaction over here. So we can see that this compound that is formed through hydrohalogenation looks like this. It is one carbon with three hydrogens attached to a carbon with one hydrogen, which has a chloro branch and then attached to another carbon with three hydrogens. So what we can see is a hydrohalogenation reaction is the addition of a hydrogen and a halogen. And so what this would suggest is a dehydrohalogenation reaction would be the removal of those, which would then suggest that question 4.2's answer, the structural formula for compound two, is also a three carbon chain, but where once we have removed a hydrogen and a chlorine, we form a double bond between the first and second carbon and so we write down our structural formula, again, remembering to include every hydrogen atom that is present. And that is our structural formula for compound Q, again, determined by the reversal of the hydrohalogenation reaction, essentially a dehydrohalogenation reaction, where we look at what we have over here. And then we say, what would happen if we were to remove this hydrogen, this chlorine, and this hydrogen. Question 4.3 then asks or states that reaction one is an elimination reaction. Write down the type of elimination reaction. And as we've suggested, what we must have started with here is some compound, compound P, that is broken apart to form an alkene and an alkane. And the only type of elimination reaction that that can be is then a cracking reaction. Cracking is where we start out with one long chain and we break it up into either two short chain alkenes and a hydrogen or into one alkane and one alkene, which is what this reaction here has been. Question 4.2, we are asked for the molecular formula of compound P. And compound P, what we hopefully would realize is compound P must have been the sum of this compound here that contained five hydrogens and 12, sorry, five carbons and 12 hydrogens and compound Q that we have identified in the previous question that contained three, three carbons and nine, excuse me, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, three carbons and six hydrogens. And so to find compound Q, we would say, that that would be C5H12 plus this C3H12. 
six and therefore our molecular formula to answer question 4.3.2 would be C8H18. Question 4.4 asks us to write down the IUPAC name of compound R. So they are asking if we take compound Q, which we have identified above as this compound over here, and we go through a bromination reaction, meaning the addition of bromine, which we know to be diatomic, then we know that that is going to form a new compound and we identify that compound by seeing that we would start by breaking the double bond, which leaves an extra space for a bond to be formed on both the first and the second carbons, which therefore leaves our answer to question 4.4, as if we draw this in the structural formula, it would still be three carbons where the double bond has now been broken. The original hydrogens still remain. And we now have added two extra bromine atoms, one on each carbon that lost a double bond. And so we have a compound that looks like this. We have, however, been asked for the IUPAC name. And the IUPAC name here is meth prop. It is an alkane, so propane with bromine groups on the first and second carbon. And so we would call this one comma two dibromo di to represent the fact that there are two of them. And that is dibromo propane, all written as one word. Question 4.5 reads, for the hydrolysis reaction, write down the balanced equation using structural formula. And so the balanced equation for this reaction that occurs over here, where we show how our 2-chloropropane goes through hydrolysis. So we start out by showing our chloro, uh, the original compound here, and a hydrolysis reaction is usually a reaction in which a functional group is exchanged for a hydroxyl group. This can be done in a number of ways. It can be done through a reaction with sodium hydroxide. It can also be done in a reaction with potassium hydroxide or in a reaction with a water molecule. I'm going to show the reaction with the water molecule. And so in this hydrolysis reaction, the chlorine atom on our original compound is going to be replaced by a hydroxyl group that comes from the water. And so what we can do is we can show that we therefore form an alcohol where that hydroxyl group now replaces the chlorine. Nothing else changes on that molecule. And we have the initial hydrogen that is now attached to the chlorine. Obviously, if we had chosen to show this reaction with sodium hydroxide, then we would have formed sodium chloride as our byproduct or potassium hydroxide. We would have formed potassium chloride as the byproduct. Question 4.5.2, we are asked to identify the reaction conditions for this specific hydrolysis reaction. And there are a number of options here. The first option is that mild heat is required for this reaction to take place. The second option is that we need a diluted strong base to be present, diluted strong base, or water would be present, obviously, depending on which option we chose here. And those are our conditions for this reaction. This question, when marked according to the government, guidelines, we can see that question 4.1, there's one mark for identifying a hydrohalogenation as an addition reaction, and then specifically the addition of a hydrogen halide. Question 4.2, we are asked for the structural formula. Structural formula, it's important to remember to attach all of the relevant hydrogens to ensure that every carbon has formed exactly four bonds. And so we show the formation of our alkene here using structural formula. Try to make it as easy as possible for the marker by drawing this big enough so that it's easy for them to see what you have done. Question 4.3.1, it is a cracking reaction. Question 4.3.2, C8H18. And question 4.4, there were two marks here. 
one mark for identifying the main chain as being propane and one mark for identifying the bromo groups on the first and second carbon. Question 4.5.1, when we are asked to show the structural formula for an entire equation, it's important to remember that all the normal rules for structural formula apply. So it is necessary to show every single hydrogen that is part of this reaction. So we would get one mark for correctly identifying our two chloropropane, one mark for showing our other reactant. And I choose to use water here because then you can show how the bonds form between the two hydrogens and the one oxygen which ensures that you are sticking with the request to give this formula in structural formula, to write this reaction in structural formula. Then there is there are two marks allocated, one mark for the correct functional group in the correct place, and one mark for the entire product being correct. Again, remember to include every single hydrogen atom, and one mark for your byproduct, HCl, NaCl, or KCl, depending on what other reactants was used. Question 4.5.2, there was one mark for each of the conditions and that was either mild heat or that was mild heat and a dilute strong base or water.